Metallo, one of Superman's notable adversaries, has had a significant presence in DC Comics since his debut. The modern version of Metallo, primarily known as John Corbin, has undergone several reimagining to keep the character fresh and relevant. John Corbin first appeared as Metallo in Action Comics number 252 in 1959. Initially, Corbin was a small-time criminal who was fatally injured in a car accident. A scientist named Professor Bill saved his life by transferring his brain into a robotic body powered by a kryptonite heart. Following the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths in 1986, Metallo was reintroduced with an updated backstory and powers in John Byrne's The Man of Steel miniseries. This iteration presented Corbin as a journalist who transforms into Metallo after a near-fatal accident, receiving a kryptonite-powered robotic body from a scientist named Emmett Bill. In the 1990s, Metallo's popularity surged with his recurring role in Superman, the animated series in 1996 to 2000, where he was voiced by Malcolm McDowell. This version emphasized his tragic transformation and hatred for Superman. Metallo played a significant role in the Superman Batman Public Enemies storyline in 2003-2004, depicted as one of Lex Luthor's key operatives with his kryptonite heart serving as a critical weapon against Superman. His involvement in major crossover events like Infinite Crisis and 52 in 2006 further cemented his status as a powerful enforcer for various villains. The new 52 reboot in 2011 saw Metallus' origin revised again. In Action Comics number 2, he is portrayed as a soldier named John Corbin who volunteers for the Metallo project, turning into a cyborg with advanced weaponry and kryptonite heart. This version focused more on his military background and personal vendetta against Superman. With DC Rebirth in 2016, Metallo retained much of his New 52 background but with refinements to align with the classic aspect of his personality and history. He continued to be significant threat to Superman, often manipulated by other villains like Lex Luthor. In recent storylines such as Superman, The Man of Tomorrow, Metallo's struggle with his humanity and mechanical body parts is highlighted, showing his complex nature beyond just being a villain. In Superman Villains 2020, Metallo plays a crucial role in the fallout of Superman revealing his secret identity to the world, showcasing his enduring grudge against the Man of Steel. Overall, Metallo remains one of Superman's most enduring popes, consistently portrayed as a tragic figure whose humanity is overshadowed by his mechanical transformation. His kryptonite heart makes him a perpetual threat to Superman, while his evolving backstory keeps him relevant in the ever-changing landscape of DC Comics. Hey yo everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving deep into one of the Man of Steel's popular villain in his rogues gallery, Metallo. Let's start with the packaging. The front of the box prominently displays McParlane Gold Label Collection DC Multiverse Metallo. There's a large, clear window showing up the figure and its accessories. On the right side, you'll see McParlane Toys DC Multiverse Metallo. Surprisingly, nothing is written for the source material that inspired this figure. The left side continues the window display and also says McParlane Toys DC Multiverse Metallo. Finally, the back of the box features artwork from the comics, which I must admit I have no idea where from. This version of Metallo is not familiar to me. That's it for the packaging. Now, let's crack this open and see if McParlane did justice to this version of Metallo in action figure form. 
The figure stands at 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters. He comes with the standard McPerlin art card with a short biography at the back. Standard McPerlin stand with the DC logo. And this, which I guess is supposed to be pieces of kryptonite. Unfortunately, he doesn't come with any alternate hands, so we are stuck with those two hands. First impression out of the box, I was certainly wondering if this is a reuse of the Lex Luthor power suit mold. Uh, but I, I I got that figure hidden away already in one of my boxes, so uh, I, I, I am not sure 100%. But I'm thinking maybe this upper torso, torso is an original mold. But some parts of him, I think, is from the Lex Luthor power suit. Now, I am not familiar with this look of Metallo. The way I remember Metallo, he looks more like a skeleton robot, like that one in Terminator, but has human, you know, but has a human portion. Uh, and I am not really that updated in comics, so I, I really, I am really not used to this new look of Metallo. But looking at the art card, I guess... I can say that they that McParlane did some creative freedom in making this uh this uh, action figure because there are parts that I guess they they copied but I think there are parts that they did not for example this leg portion is co uh, is completely obviously different from the action figure so I'm thinking that McParlane had some creative freedom in making this action figure. Now, one thing I noticed with this head sculpt, I love the fact that you can see human eyes behind the face plate. And yeah, I actually like this design of head sculpt. Especially, yeah, that one, the one that you can see human eyes behind it. I like that design. Not also familiar with this logo because when I see this, I'm thinking Atom, but I'm pretty sure that when we talk about Metallo, one of the this one of his distinguishing characteristics is that he's powered by kryptonite. So I'm thinking maybe there's kryptonite there. I actually love the paint job in this figure. Aside from monsters and stuff like that, McPerdine is actually pretty good in designing, uh, you know, robotic design. And I guess since this is an armored, or I'm not sure if it is an armored, or uh, wait, but I well, Metallo I think is a cyborg. This is definitely right. This is definitely right in McParlane's alley. And looking at the details, and as I said, I think they uh, McParlane had some, you know, made some creative freedom in making this figure. I love it. I love all these sculpted details that they put on the figure. This is what I actually love with McFarlane. Their figures are not boring. They do add a lot of sculpt on their figure. And most of the time, they have the sculpt, but they usually peel on the paint job. But I guess in the case of this figure, the paint job is pretty good. I love the metallic finish that they've given specifically to this color. 
I just wish the the leg part they uh, since they are already doing some creative freedom they added more of this color on the leg part because it being mostly red I don't know um I think it would have been cooler if there's more paint here of this color or this color anyway that's just me but yeah bottom line as far as the sculpt and paint job of this figure, it is, de it is definitely a 10. Now let's go with articulation. You can look there, you can look there, you can look down that far, you can look up that far, you can do side to side. Yeah, head sculpt, articulation definitely good as for the hands you can do the tifos and as usual typical this mcperlane engineering here which to be honest i don't like i wish they change it so there's that and then there's that bicep cut double jointed elbow and double peg wrists he has a bicep cut so you can do that you can uh, yeah articulation side to side and forward with only this bicep cut it's pretty much non-existent he does have a waist rotation so combining the waist rotation and that cut yeah that articulation is mostly coming from the waist looking down look forward he can't he can't side to side side to side is good thigh articulation thigh articulation in the case of this figure is, actually works yeah, this tire articulation actually works. Double jointed knee, that far. And then for the ankle, there's the articulation. Then toe articulation. He can kick that far and he can kick back that far. So yeah. Metallo can do the split. Then he can do the bend them pretty well. So far, those joint articulations actually works. Overall, this is actually a pretty good looking figure. He looks pretty cool. The mold and paint job is is done is done well and yeah this is a pretty good addition to your superman rogues anyway guys if you've reached this part of my review thank you very much and if you like my video please don't forget to like share and subscribe and again guys enjoy life and keep collecting